Hello everybody, welcome back to Planet X News, January 16th, 2018. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the late, late live stream, but uh, today I was very, very busy and we made some new discoveries and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I was watching a live stream two days ago uh, over on Mr. MBB333's YouTube channel. And um, if you folks are not subscribed to Mr. MB's channel, I would definitely suggest that you do so. You get yourself over there, follow him on Facebook, follow him on YouTube, because the man puts out great information on a variety of subjects, by the way. Uh, one thing that I do want to mention uh, he was doing a live stream because he found an anomaly on the sun and he was he was putting it out there you know he was letting his subscribers see it pointing it out the man has been what we refer to as a watchman or a watcher for a very long time you know kind of like me you know we we see subject matters out there involving our planet our climate you know our solar system and the people of this world and and we disclose the information we let you know what our opinions are on some of these matters so he found this anomaly on the Sun on the SDO the solar dynamics observatory you see me using a lot of this material uh, you know searching for planet X and he was looking at this this honeycomb type of structure that was you know forming on the uh, the outer corona of the sun and he's you know he's a, a stargazer and he knows a lot about the solar system and our sun and our earth and he pointed out this this honeycomb anomaly in the uh, the corona of the sun and I had stepped into his live stream and he gave Planet X News a couple of shout outs and he said I'm glad you're here uh, I definitely think that this is something that you know you'll you'll like to see you'll be interested in this so I watched uh, all of the, the live stream and uh, ladies and gentlemen, if, if you know what Patreon is, Patreon is a, a website where you, you can actually donate and help contribute to funding some of these YouTube channels. And uh, I have a, a Patreon account set up for Dr. Elvers and uh, I actually, I donated some money to Mr. MBB333, boom, right then and there, 20 bucks. Hey, you do a hell of a job because folks, it does take a lot of time and effort to do this type of research, put this type of information together and get it out there to the people. But when Mr. MB, whenever he showed this information, I was, uh, I was pretty intrigued at what he was showing. And I'm going to get to a lot of this in a few minutes. Um, as I started looking into what he uh, what he was showing his his subscribers and his followers. Uh, hold on, just one second. I'm gonna pull up our live stream here real quick. But whenever he showed this information, I was pretty intrigued. So I went and started looking at the material. Uh, it was for a specific date, January 11th, going into the 12th. And I started reviewing the information and taking some steel shots and things of that nature. And wow, lo and behold, you know, not only did we see this little honeycomb structure that he was looking at, but a few frames further from the point where he was looking, lo and behold, as the the corona of the sun bubbles over and kind of moves around you know it's it's almost like 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 a flowing jello on the on the uh, outer parts of the sun well lo and behold a few frames further i i stop and i i look and i said to myself wow what in the hell is this you know ladies and gentlemen nature itself as they say Nature uh, doesn't often create perfect 90 degree angles and nature doesn't produce 
perfect spheres, especially on our sun. Our sun is in constant internal motion as well as external motion. So for the sun to produce perfect spheres within itself, like as in impressions, ladies and gentlemen, that is pretty much impossible. And if you've been watching the sun as long as I have, and you've been you've been looking at these um, these NASA models of the sun, all of the ones that we use, SOHO, uh, the stereo, the the SDO, you'll know what I'm talking about. Excuse me, my sinuses are killing me again today. But anyways, as I started you know reviewing this information and blah blah blah, I, I see this this spherical object dead center right above this small little honeycomb region that he was talking about and then i went frame by frame on this this sdo footage and holy cow not only did i spot this smaller sphere but for the first time uh, we spotted the, the massive object that we're always catching in the coronal mass ejections. And, and you've seen them here on my Facebook page and my YouTube channel. Probably because of the positioning of Earth in its orbit around the sun and the orbit of planet X. And it's in a really tight orbit around the sun. I know a lot of you listen to, uh, you know, other people who research this matter, the, the whole Nibiru theory, you are probably involved in some other groups on uh, Facebook. But folks, the bottom line is there's a big difference between what they're referring to as Nibiru and what is actually out there interacting with our sun. So there's a big difference. Nemesis and Nibiru have the theory that they, they come in Every 3,600 years, they wreak havoc and shh, they go right back out. Well, folks, this isn't what's happening. Um, these stellar core objects, they're here. They're here to stay. So let's get that out the door right now because I get that question 100 times a day. This object is pretty, pretty massive. It's about three to five times the size of Jupiter. So as I was reviewing more and more of this footage, blah, 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 I happened to see this massive object, but it is one of the first times that we have seen it from the Earth view on the SDO on the front face of the sun, almost directly at the equatorial region of the sun, meaning the, equ the, the equator, the equatorial region in the middle. Now, I'm going to show you the photographs. If you are using a computer, uh, try to turn up the resolution on your, your monitor if you can. Um, if you're using a cell phone, tilt that baby horizontally and, and, and try to watch this later on on a computer screen because I want your resolution to be good. So I started looking around and I see these, these spheres and again, you know, nature is not going to produce these types of perfect spheres. And, you know, you'll, you'll understand when I get to the pictures. This background is lighter in color, but the object is much darker. And if you know about the camera systems on the, uh, the SDO, uh, they're, they're filming the sun in extreme ultraviolet light but on different frequencies, 304 angstroms, 193, 171. And what that does is that gives the scientists the ability to see through the different layers of the corona, therefore allowing us to see uh, flares, filaments, the corona holes and things of that nature. So we got that all out there. So these cameras are not your typical cameras. These are pretty sophisticated uh, super cameras. Again, they take the photographs and the video in extreme ultraviolet light, but in different frequencies because there are four cameras 
on that satellite spacecraft, the SDO. So you ask yourself, like, how would you be able to see this? Well, that's why, because of the extreme ultraviolet light frequencies and the different levels, the different angstroms. So we're getting different views. So what we're going to take a look at now was actually captured in the 193 angstrom, and that's kind of the bronzy, uh, the bronzy color on the SDO. Whenever I pull that up, I usually use the composite version. But anywho, let's get into these and check them out. And again, I'm going to leave them up here, and I want you to pay very close attention because you're you're going to have to concentrate just a little bit. So they're not the best of photographs but what I'm about to show you just kind of took a keen eye to notice this and if Mr. MBB uh, if he would have never pointed out this honeycomb looking structure I would have never seen this because that's how disguised it is in the Sun's Corona and the view from the SDO directly straight at the Sun so it kind of got lost. So I'm going to zoom in here real quick. Now this 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 honeycomb structure, you're looking at these uh, six kind of oval looking. Uh, they're not really objects. These are just uh, this is the 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 corona of the sun. You know, bubbling over and it's in constant motion, kind of like a fluid uh, type of a look. So this honeycomb structure. This is what Mr. MB was looking at. This is what he was looking at. Right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And in a couple of those frames, you know, this kind of changed because, again, uh, this, this fluidity is kind of in constant motion. Sorry, I needed a sip of my Red Bull. But anyways... After he points this out to me on his live stream, you know me, I immediately start poking around. And, you know, he did ask me through his live stream, hey, take a look at this. You know, you might find it interesting. So, lo and behold, I'm looking at the this little honeycomb shape that he referred to it as. And what do I see? Right there. A complete, perfectly round sphere with perfect identifying marks that do not, do not match its own background. So this is what I was talking about in the beginning, folks. Nature is not going to produce perfect spheres, perfect squares, perfect 90 degree angles. You know, even in space, it just does not happen. So whenever you're looking at the, the jumbled mess, just take a look at it. Oops. So if you just take a look at it, I mean, you can see. I mean, do you see a bunch of 90 degree angles? Do you see a bunch of perfect spheres other than the sun itself? So you would actually miss this. I probably wouldn't even noticed it. So something like this just doesn't belong in the picture. That's just the easiest way that I could express it. So as I pan in, and I you know I had to I had to run this through some different filters. Other than that nothing else has been done to these uh, these screenshots so again right dead center in the middle of your screen you can see the perfect outline right there now you know I know to a lot of you you may be saying to yourself oh that's just complete BS. Well, you have every right to your opinion. But when you have been looking at these types of images as long as I have, 
You know when things are definitely out of place. You know what the, uh, the Solar Dynamics Observatory footage looks like. You know the different angstroms of light and the different views. And for a perfect sphere to appear like that within this footage, it just doesn't happen, folks, unless something is actually there in the form of a sphere. So, bingo, we have that right there. So, you know, I wanted to take it another level and, uh, you know, we started taking x-ray photographs of uh, this portion of the SDO. And uh, this is the x-ray photograph right here. And again, if you use your eyes and you concentrate on uh, this photograph, you're not going to see any 90 degree angles. And I mean real 90 degree angles. You're not going to see any perfect spheres okay because you know this is like the liquid sun so you're just not going to see these types of uh geo uh geo uh geographic or excuse me what's the word i want to use uh geographic no not geographic oh god geology no that's not it either <laughs> scott might need some sleep right now but you're not going to see these types of shapes. Let me get another sip of my Red Bull. Hold on, folks. It's not too often I get tongue-tied. But anyways, you know, on this view, you're not going to see any of these perfect shapes. So as we got the x-ray view, we started rolling into the area that we wanted to see. Lo and behold... You know, we see the little honeycomb structure that Mr. MB was talking about. But then right there, bingo. Now, the sphere in this x-ray view is absolutely perfect. So, this is, this is actually a spherical body moving across the equatorial region of the sun... And it is that close. It is that close that it is actually enveloped in the outer corona of the sun. Just like Dr. Elbers has been trying to prove and just like I have been trying to prove. That is how close this object is to the sun. Now, it does make its way out and away from the sun in the course of its orbit because it seems like it's it's on a little bit of an elliptical orbit but the orbit is so tight it's it's about 27 to maybe 30 days i think it's more like 27 or 28 days that is close to the actual rotation of the sun because the sun rotates we move around the sun and this is the first time that we've actually captured this object on the front face of the sun that we see. So I don't know if that makes sense to any of you. But again, you look at this and you say to yourself, okay, now that is an absolutely perfect sphere. It doesn't look like an egg. It doesn't look like an oval. You know, it's not a paperclip shape. It is perfectly spherical. Now, how do we know is because we measured from here to here. We measured from here to here. And this object is damn near perfectly spherical all the way around. It's not like this blob right here. It is perfectly spherical. Just take a look at that for a minute. Very interesting. So after we looked at the x-ray image and, and also, you know, I had to turn each one of these screenshots into higher definition. So we are actually able to see uh, this object perfectly and it gets better. 
Just hold on. So this is another level of the uh, the X-ray of the sun. Let's roll in here. And if you concentrate your eyes on this, you'll see it. Now this is at a different level. The bottom part, if you follow my cursor, the bottom part of this is kind of encapsulated a little bit with the corona. But right here above it, almost 75% of this spherical object is completely 100% identifiable. There is just absolutely no doubt whatsoever. And again, I mean, this is just like a second level x-ray that we took of the photograph so we can get, you know, a better view. And again, like I said, you know, to a lot of you, this may not mean much. You may think, oh, oh, poppycock, <laughs> you know, or this is complete BS. But again, you know, if you've been looking at these SDO uh, photographs and images and, uh, you know, the video, as long as I have, you will easily start to understand that uh, these, these squares, rectangles, or perfect spheres, they just do not appear within the corona of our sun. They just don't. So let's move on to the next picture. Now, uh, as I, I got away from the, uh, the other photograph, I advanced into the next day. So that was on the 11th. I went through the 12th. And as I got through uh, part of January 12th, I said to myself, what is that? What is that? So, you know, what you're looking at on your screen right now, folks, doesn't look like anything to you. But again, my eyes are trained uh, pretty well on all of these, these NASA models. What I was actually looking for was this large plasma river or plasma jet. I showed you guys yesterday on a few pictures I dropped on the Planet X News uh, Facebook page. Uh, this long plasma river or plasma jet, uh, this thing was over, over 400,000 miles long and it is directly earth facing. So this, this right here, this is what I was looking at. That's what I wanted to see. But then I said, oh my God, what in the hell is this? Another huge sphere. Look at the size of it. Look at the coloration and then look at its background. Look at the coloration of the sphere. Look at the background. Look at the stripes, clearly defined, clearly defined. There are clearly defined stripes going in the opposite direction of what is happening on the sun. Right here, you see this huge white spot. This white spot was thought to be possibly a sunspot, but it doesn't show up. What this possibly is, is some type of, it can possibly be a massive volcanic eruption, but there is energy coming from this, this big sphere. There is a massive amount of energy coming from this sphere right here in this region. And we have actually captured photographs, not as good as this, but pretty close to this object having some type of its own flaring, its own eruptions, and take into consideration, folks, uh, this object is within the outer corona of the sun, which is extremely hot. Uh, the outer corona of the sun, we're talking millions of degrees, possibly, it is actually hotter than the, the internal parts of the sun. So this is something that may be occurring as this object is moving by. You know, we're seeing a lot of disruptions, a lot of things happening on our planet. Some of them could be attributed to the sun, but 
not in not in the way of the weather so if we are actually looking at the sun straight on this is the view hold on one second i'm going to show you something Here, let's take a look at uh This is the actual view of what the uh, what the SDO sees. So it's kind of a straight on view from what we would be seeing from Earth. Disruptions from coronal holes, they come directly towards the Earth, all of that that solar energy. OK, but we haven't been seeing that much in the form of uh, of this solar energy it's been kind of quiet this big dark region right here uh, this is this this massive plasma river that I was referring to and this is what I was watching because you know folks uh, that is plasma uh, there could be a massive filament or plasma release directly earth facing and this thing is approximately 400,000 miles long with a ton of energy in it I mean you know we were looking at a, a a nasty situation if something goes wrong while we're in this type of a view and this structure is right here right in our pathway right in our face and nobody talked about it but I did I looked up the information on this and uh, you know I think they first saw something kind of like this back in the what it was uh, the late 70s uh, was the article that I, I read and this was hard to find information on these uh, these plasma rivers and these these plasma jets as they call them but you know looking around in this region this is what I was looking at so we're having a lot of disruptions on earth as far as our jet stream uh, the weather uh, there's a lot of us that believe the earth is now tilting uh, in a very severe wobble possibly between another five to eight degrees uh, therefore pushing the jet stream into erratic movements and pushing these polar vortexes all the way down into the United States and parts of Europe um, if we go back and we take a look uh, right where we were here in this photograph this this object is now earth facing so if this is our planet X it's earth facing like right now so we saw a pretty a pretty bad earthquake off the coast of uh, Peru I mean we've seen some pretty rocking earthquakes over the last couple of days and on top of that we have seen four or five volcanoes that have been kind of dormant unheard of and now they're blowing their stack so there is definitely something that earth is in a line with right now that is causing a lot of this disruption so i'm putting it together this object is earth facing as of the 13th it's right here on the left limb of the sun now it could be rotating and orbiting the opposite way or it could be orbiting with the sun I think that it is orbiting with the Sun in the same rotation as the Sun I don't think it's going the opposite way I think it's going the same way as the Sun so therefore that would put this object almost towards the middle about right now we're at the 16th this was three days later it has probably made its way towards the middle I correlated all of this information with what I'm looking at weather wise and the jet stream over the course of the next week it doesn't look good it looks really 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 bad for a lot of different reasons and I'll go over that in a minute but for your own eyes I mean do you actually think that this perfect sphere wrapped in uh, wrapped in the corona of the Sun do you actually think 
that that is part of the sun? Hell no. Then, when you see this, I notice that this, uh, this plasma river that we were seeing stretching 400,000 miles across the front face of the sun, earth facing, look very closely, folks. It's not coming from the sun. This plasma discharge looks like it is coming from this sphere. It is literally attached to it. Look, right here at the base. Look at that. You know, we know that this object is some type of a uh, some type of a, a stellar core, you know, the remnant of a, of a burned out star. You know, and folks, and just because the, we use that term, you know, remnant or burned out star, it doesn't mean that this object doesn't have power and energy, but it does. It has a massive magnetic field, much stronger than the Earth's. On top of that, this object is three to five times the size of Jupiter, which makes it a pretty massive object. And there are probably a few other objects with it, like we've said before. We don't know exactly how many. Two days ago, two days ago, scientists just came out with published papers. Uh, matter of fact, Suspicious Observer. Uh, his YouTube channel. He went over the information. He pulled the abstracts up. And scientists have found several more brown dwarf stars. Some of them orbiting around host stars with other planets around them and moons. And then they found something intriguing. They found brown dwarf stars that are not orbiting any other star but they were many solar systems because they had planets and moons orbiting them so these are some intriguing breakthroughs in real published science that what we theorize is 100 percent possible now, whether or not that object is a brown dwarf, we don't know for sure. Because, you know, we haven't been out there like NASA and tested uh, the composition of this object. I'm sure they know by now what the composition is. But here's something else that's intriguing, folks. You know, they're, they're getting ready to launch that, uh, that one space satellite that's going to fly into the sun literally melt itself away and as it moves towards the sun it's going to take an extreme amount of data and then it's going to destroy itself as they say but what are they really doing i think they're really pushing this this new craft to go all the way out there and get as close to this object as possible so they can get more data that's what i think because why would a space agency spend, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars on a satellite just to crash it into the sun? It's going to burn up anyways. So I hope a lot of you can see that. And I hope a lot of you are understanding, you know, what we're talking about, what we're seeing. Um, we're, we're not making a bunch of assumptions here. Um, we're actually showing real evidence, real evidence, you know, not, not lens flares and camera anomalies and all that crap. Okay. That is real. That is as real as you can get. And again, you know, it's been a very, 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 very long time uh, since these scientists have seen these massive long uh, plasma jets and plasma rivers, whatever you want to call them. You'll see very small ones, but you won't see them 400,000 miles long. And then when you zoom in, uh, you can see that it's literally attached to this object. That object, you know, 
may have been causing this, this plasma river. The extreme magnetic field of this object being so close to Earth as far as in an alignment. Okay, so maybe we're talking about 93 million miles away. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know, brown dwarf stars, uh, remnants like this, cores, stellar cores, they have a magnetic field. The reach could be 100 million miles. It could be 150. It could be 250 million miles. We don't exactly know. But it may just be strong enough where its, its outreach is affecting the Earth, affecting everything that's happening right now. Because this object is facing the Earth as we speak. If, if, if my calculations and what me and Dr. Elbers have been looking into, this object is moving left to right, left to right, which means it's all the way over here on the, uh, the, the 12th and 13th of January. Today's the 16th. So it should be pretty close to the middle of the sun. Are we going to see it? Well, guess what, folks? Myself, suspicious observer, everybody, we've all been trying to get on the Solar Dynamics Observatory website since about five o'clock this morning. And they have it, what? Shut the hell down. So did you hear me? Did you all hear what I just said? They shut the SDO down. I checked an hour ago, it was still not up. And that's kind of rare. We don't see it all the time. But all the time we get close, anytime we get close to something like this, it gets shut down. Too late. Because we have the beginning stages of this evidence that this, this object is moving across the face of the sun, earth facing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be straight up with you. Don't uh, don't be surprised if if we have another rocking earthquake uh, over a magnitude six into the sevens. It's going to happen. Uh, it is uh, for the first time we're actually seeing this object moving across the face of the sun um, in two years. And like I said before, it it just takes. The Earth being in the right position in its orbit at the right time and us getting the right camera shot. And bingo, here we go. So I'll pull it up. I'll make it a little bit bigger for you. This is just a little bit of a, a, a filter change so we can see it a little bit more. You can see the perfect outline. It is absolutely perfect. And on top of all of that, that uh, that plasma river is flowing directly from it all the way across the sun. So is this a, a plasma connection that's been made? Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Elbers and I, we, we pretty much reviewed a lot of this uh, late yesterday and uh, she was reviewing most of it uh, literally all day. And uh, we're both in agreement that uh, there is absolutely no way that you could have a perfect sphere within the corona and the plasma river that just set it all off. We almost missed this. So I have some more color changes. And again, you know, we are trying to detect is something off. You know, are we just, you know, seeing the, the bubbling surface of the sun? And again, as you make some color changes and you go into some different frequencies of light, well, you can see that it's, it's a perfect sphere with its own outline. Now, you see some of this lighter pink color. Uh, this is the actual corona of the sun. This object is literally in the corona, the outer corona of the sun. 
We wonder why we see these coronal holes forming on the back side of the sun, rolling from the left to the right, and they're always coming in and, and, and becoming Earth-facing. This is probably the reason why that this object is having that effect, uh, a magnetic connection with the sun, and it's literally depleting the outer corona, the outer atmosphere of the sun, therefore opening up those coronal holes, therefore allowing the solar wind to just blast out of the sun. Uh, we were just in a, uh, a solar wind stream that was clocked at 1.3 million miles per hour impacting Earth the other day. So this is something that we have been seeing and noting and paying very close attention to for two years now. Uh, things have gone to, okay, we have to watch this. And then, you know, it moved up. Well, uh, things are starting to happen. And then here we are now, two years later. And as I've been saying, things are going to get worse. Um, we have to pay very close attention to all of this. So here we are. Yeah, things are to a point now where we don't know what's going to happen day by day, <laughs> let alone hour by hour or minute by minute. So, you know, it's something that we, we definitely want to keep our eye on. Uh, I will be keeping my eye on it. You can guarantee that. But uh, here is another change in the filter to, once again, uh, give us a little bit of an x-ray type of a look at this. And, you know, you can clearly see that plasma river. But lo and behold, as we have removed a little bit more of the outer corona of the sun you can now see more of the perfect sphere you can now see the actual stripes on this object similar to uh, Jupiter you can clearly see those okay so folks once again um, this object here it doesn't match its own background So I'll leave this up here for a second. You guys take a look. You can clearly see it. Uh, this is the corona right here that's uh, kind of shadowing the, the, the lower, uh, maybe 25% of, uh, of planet X, you want to call it, the stellar core. You can see the rest of it perfectly. And you can see the attachment, the plasma attachment right there. It's even like a, like a, like a leech. It's sucked right to... The top of this object it's right there here's the plasma river the plasma jet it's over 400,000 miles long so let me ask you something folks are, are you guys actually seeing what I'm showing you now I don't mean the picture because I know you can see it but are you actually seeing what we have discovered if you could all just, you know, give me a thumbs up, a yes, a no, you're crazy, whatever. I'm going to take another sip of my Red Bull. Ah, that's good. All right, good. I'm glad you guys can see that. Um, this, is a, this is a bigger discovery for us because we really haven't seen this type of view like like earth facing uh, we've been catching this object slightly behind the sun uh about the one o'clock position the 11 o'clock position and the seven o'clock position where this object is right now uh it is pretty close to where we normally see it during coronal mass ejections so that leads me to believe that yes bingo we are on target with identifying this and, you know, it, it's, it's real suspicious that I start talking about this yesterday with Dr. Elbers and, you know, exchanged a few emails with her transmitting this information. And then, you know, by early, early this morning in the middle of the night, now the SDO website and all of the information is locked down off freaking line 
So we normally analyze the 48 hour loops, which is two days. So if this object was where it was at on the 13th, today is going into the 16th, then again, that must have meant this object was going to be dead center in the middle of the damn screen. And what? They took the whole site down because they don't want to show us that. I mean, that's what I think. And on top of that, the same thing was happening to the Helio viewer, which gives us, you know, similar footage. So they took it down. We'll see what happens whenever they bring it up. Uh, whenever they bring it up, it might not be there. Uh, this was an x-ray view of what Mr. MBB333 was looking at. He was looking at this little honeycomb area here. And lo and behold, you know, we find this, this same sphere here. And again, you can see the very well-defined stripes on it. It's not something that is in that, that, that you would see in that background. So I took a bunch of different um, filtered views of this object, again, just to make sure that I am looking at what I'm looking at. So if you change the different angstroms of light, on the SDO, you're going to get different deeper views or shallower views of the Corona. It's going to take you level by level all the way in. So as I take different views, this is the 304. Now on the 304, that's your big, bright, reddish, orange, uh, SDO image that I show you guys all the time. It's good for watching solar filament releases and plasma releases and things of that nature. So, we go into a different angstrom of light and lo and behold, again, right under what Mr. MB was pointing out, these kind of like honeycomb looking shapes right here. Well, bingo, there you go. There's our sphere, very well defined stripes on it. I mean, just take a gander at that. <laughs> you know, kind of with the untrained eye, uh, you might not even see that. Whenever you get too close to it, uh, you don't see it. But again, with the trained eye, you could see the perfectly dark line, which kind of gives it away. Uh, when you have that perfectly dark line around a sphere, I mean, that's showing you that it's not a flat surfaced object. This is a sphere. So you can kind of see the, the shadowing that defines its so-called edge, even though we, we know a sphere doesn't have an edge. But you know what I mean. So this, this was the 304 that we were, we were looking at, the 304 angstrom uh, SDO image again just to make sure that this just didn't disappear it didn't it stayed right where it was supposed to be now getting into this image real quick folks I had a lot of people I posted this uh, early yesterday morning because a lot of people were you know shooting me this this same core two and or excuse me, uh, C2 and C3 photographs from the uh, Soho coronagraphs, um, you know, debating whether or not that was Venus. And uh, I checked, like I do all the time, I checked it with, you know, several different other websites, uh, not, um, not government related, and checking it on solar system scope, and also knowing exactly where the Soho satellite is. And where Venus is right now so in this image you know the camera is right between the earth and the Sun the Soho spacecraft it orbits with us around the Sun so Venus has a little bit of a little bit of a inclined orbit and the C3 is taken from a, a little bit of a same distance, but this is zoomed in 
this is not. The red, the C2 is zoomed in, the C3 is not. So you'll see Venus start to come from behind the sun and the sun is represented by the white circle. The black part is the occulter blocking out the corona of the sun. So Venus is in the right position according to where this camera is, where the earth is. Venus is in the right position to be just popping out. Here it looks different because it's zoomed in. But that's Venus. The overwhelming amount of light from the sun and Venus's little bit of atmosphere makes it glow, makes it shine. So now that we got that out of the way, I think these were uh, pretty incredible uh, photographs. Uh, this is definitely something that we're going to have to continue to look into. You know, the only thing that worries me now is that the SDO has been down for, I don't know, almost 20 hours. Uh, again, that's kind of, that's pretty odd. Um, they're probably going to cover this up. But, you know, we have the, uh, we have the evidence that we do, and, and that's what counts. As far as what's going to happen on this planet, folks, you know, people, people keep saying, when are we going to see this? When are we going to see this? And I think to myself, I mean, what are you doing? Are you living under a rock or what? You are already seeing this. You're not just going to see the world come to an end uh, because that's, you know, I mean, that's something that I don't believe is going to happen, but, you know, I could be wrong. We are already seeing cataclysms on this planet in, in, in higher numbers than we've ever seen before. Um, dormant volcanoes just, you know, coming to life and coming to life immediately with eruptions. Earthquake situations, they're getting, they're getting more severe. Uh, I was talking with Dr. Albers a, a good bit about this. Uh, late last night and, and, and some of today. And, and she's doing some research right now and she's putting a paper together related to uh, the stresses on our tectonic plates and magnetic fields. So if this object in its position right now, it will have the ability to put additional pressure on our tectonic plates. But in the same aspect, folks, Folks, there's a high possibility that, you know, being this close to it at this point in time, and it's the first time I've seen this, you know, it does have the ability to latch on to uh, what they consider our, our North Pole and, and pull on us. The Earth will try to keep itself in its position, but the magnetic field for X amount of days could possibly be tugging on the earth. We really wouldn't notice it, but we're seeing these weird uh, tidal changes. Um, water disappearing from beaches and bays. It happened again in Tampa, uh, Ecuador, I think, and uh, Brazil. And then you throw in the weather and this extreme uh, jet stream. The jet stream is, I would say, three times its normal size. And the jet stream is very, very severe. And the jet stream is what's causing a lot of these problems. And we're going to go ahead and just jump into that real quick. And I'll let you guys, I'll let you guys go. Well, where's my windy map? You know, I was checking into... Uh, some more of the weather and uh you know we got a we got an extreme amount of ice here in the pittsburgh area because the temperatures well it was raining before that that cold front moved in here and it rained hard for probably uh 10 hours it laid down a tremendous amount of water and then all that water flash froze um there were some areas that had up to three quarters Three quarters of an inch of ice embedded uh, underneath all of that snow that came right after it. So we got about uh, four and a half, 
five inches uh, here where I live uh, just a little bit south of the city. So I was running this out today and I was also trying to listen to some uh, climatologist scientists talking about what they are seeing and I just wanted to see if what I'm noticing, are they noticing it? We're not talking about climatologists and meteorologists that are on TV because those ones that are on TV, uh, they're not going to really talk hardcore uh, about things that they're really, really seeing. So I looked at the jet stream. I pay attention to it. I'm, I'm, I'm watching it uh, every minute that I can. So let's see here. We're going to move into the jet stream. Let's pull up the GFS model. And we're going to go up to the jet stream level 250 millibars right here. Now, this is this is uh, this is 1 a.m. right now. If you take a look at this jet stream, it is probably three to four times the size that you would normally see it. It is completely out of position. It is battering high above over the west coast of the United States. And I have never in my life seen this massive horseshoe shaped pattern in the jet stream. Never seen it. And this is what we're dealing with right now. So if you know anything about weather, if you studied it, you know, a little bit, you know about jet streams and what the jet streams, you know, how they control our weather, they create our weather. You would have never seen anything like this before. Not, there's just no way. So you're taking a look at all of this air flowing across and all of a sudden bingo it's going back up warmer air up into the arctic look at the temperatures up here <laughs> uh, that is the north pole folks these are uh these are more moderate temperatures right through here look what's happening then you wonder why the weather is like it is. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. I'm going to let this run out. And this is going to be for the next couple of days through Thursday, January 25th. And, you know, if you think this is crazy, watching the jet stream over the United States. And, you know, if I pan over to Europe and Eastern Europe, the Middle East and uh, the, uh, the Pacific, the South Pacific, well, you'll see the same craziness. So you can understand now why this is happening. The jet stream is probably maybe a thousand miles or more out of place, meaning it's a thousand miles more south than it should be. On top of that, the size of the jet stream that thickness. I mean, usually these bands in the jet stream are about 25% uh, smaller or maybe 75% smaller. I'm sorry. They're, they're about a quarter of this size. So you can see how the United States is getting battered with this insane weather and Canada. I saw some video footage coming in from New Brunswick, Canada, that was absolutely shocking when it came to these large rivers of flowing ice chunks, like here in Pittsburgh, the size of cars and trucks. It happened in Spain. It happened in France. And it's probably happening other places in the world that we're not hearing about it. This is massively destructive and the amount of flooding that is now occurring. And remember, a week ago, I told you these were going to be the circumstances and the consequences. So be prepared. If you live in, in you know, heavily uh, flood-prone areas, 
be extra cautious because folks we're looking at the same type of setup that is coming with warmer temperatures snow freezing warm temperatures which is going to mean ice thaw ice thaw flood 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 so <clears throat> let's go back here and we're going to take a look at the temperatures we're going to bring our millibars right back down to surface temperatures we're going to take our date slider we're going to slide it back to today and let's put a marker in here right here where i live i'm on now 23 degrees I have to move that down a little bit okay so this is today now you know this pink area is subarctic air uh this this lighter blue is really cold and the the, the pale blue here is just a little bit uh, just a tad warmer the green areas moderate temperatures in the uh, high 30s 38 to 45 yellow warm orange pretty warm so as of today let's run this out pay attention to the little temperature gauge up here and watch the flow of this arctic air two degrees zero degrees three degrees eleven watch it this is going into thursday the 18th friday the 19th look at the central part of the u.s this is saturday the 20th look what happens to my area temperatures go up they stay up for almost two days all of the ice all of the snow melts monday the 22nd 46 degrees and then bingo here it comes again So, ladies and gentlemen, people may think that, oh, you know, this is just weather. You know, this is boring. Uh, no, it is not boring. If you think this is boring, you're, you're, you're completely crazy. Uh, these systems, the way that this is setting up, um, you may not be getting tremendous amounts of snow. But the, the ice cold temperatures and then these warmer temperatures, this freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw. Uh, this is going to create more of this flooding, more of these ice jams. Ladies and gentlemen, these ice jams are absolutely catastrophic. Man, they could do serious damage. If they plug up uh, a bend in a river, you know, a curve, a bend in the river, if they plug it up like a dam, well, everything behind that fast-moving water is just going to flow over onto the shores and people are going to get flooded out so you know this is what we're looking at once again and i'm using the gfs model and this is uh you know this is what the uh meteorologists use i'm not using anything different than what they are but if you look at these temperatures you know i mean this is this they, they had a bunch of snow uh during this week and, and all of these temperatures, if you want to look and see the snow that's coming in, uh, these are bands of snow. Look at this. That's probably, what, 1,500 miles long? And it's curling in around up here at the Great Lakes. And uh, I'm going to let this run through because you're going to see some really, really crazy looking vortexes up in here. You're going to see weather systems move across and slam into the West Coast. You're going to see more over here on the East Coast. Look at this. They look like hurricanes. And when you see the little white dotted area, that's snow. I mean, if those don't look like hurricanes, I mean, I don't know what they, what you would call them. <laughs> and the way that these, um, these, these vortexes of air are setting up, if you notice, they set up very rapidly. 
Okay, they're not taking days and days to form, folks. They are taking only a few hours to create these very well-defined vortexes of air. They're like little mini hurricanes. I've never seen anything like it. I'll, I'll be honest. I've been watching the weather a long time. I mean, you just watch the center of circulation. They really start to form. That one over here looks like a polar hurricane slamming into Russia. I mean, look at this one over here in the Atlantic. I mean, we run out on Thursday uh, the 25th. It's when it stops. But you can see, I mean, this is going to be blasting... Uh, the Pacific Northwest for for days with with snow coming in uh, and that's at the latter part of the week but you know if you watch this now the temperatures over here were warm see the line of the polar air northern California Nevada Oregon most of Washington relatively moderate Let's see what it is down here. 65, Nevada, 46, 36, 36. So then we go ahead and we run it out from today. And let's see the extreme, the extremes of their temperature drops. 46, look at that. They're talking a lot of snow melt. And right offshore to the left, uh, you can see how this warmer air is being funneled in and, you know, keeping their temperatures moderate. But here comes that polar vortex. You know, it's, it's moving down in there. Let's get up here. We can get a, a, a reading on it. And then, you know, they're going to have some weather moving in. Whether it turns to uh, the rain turns into snow, uh, that's probably going to, you know, wherever you live in that area of Washington and Oregon and Northern California, uh, that's going to be the big change. And you can see now that's moving into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week. So all the snow that has fallen in portions of Washington, Oregon, um, Idaho, Nevada, Nevada, Las Vegas had some floods, waters rushing down the streets. Uh, we, we may have some more situations that are going to brew in, uh, in, in California, you know, with, uh, snow, rapid melt and flooding. We may see it in areas of Utah and Colorado and Wyoming. And Kansas we may see it all the way across the United States because that's where this line is dipping up and down and up and down so you know one day you get uh, six inches of snow let's say here in the corner of Nebraska just this little corner get six seven inches of snow and then for the next two days the temperatures are in the 40s Here you go. So what do you think is going to happen to all of that snow? It's going to melt. It's going to melt fast. What happens to the rivers and the streams? They can't take the water. They overflow. So we are not the only ones here in the United States that are having these, uh, these issues. Uh, we're also dealing with some pretty extreme heat, uh, you know, realizing that the Southern Hemisphere is in their summertime and uh, temperatures get, you know, pretty warm. Uh, let's take a look at some temperature readings in certain spots in South America, 102. Let's see what's going on in uh, 99. 
Yeah, their heat spell in Australia, uh, it's it's pretty pretty steadily been up there. Um, not much relief in the central portions of uh, their country. The coastlines get some some cooler breezes and air, but they're still having a, a, a pretty extensive uh, heat wave in in certain sections of Australia, as you can see. But you know, there's some other countries, uh, you know, up here in Eastern Europe, and uh, the northern parts of India are really they're in the same situation as we are folks uh, it gets warm for a few days that polar mass comes down and uh, it just wreaks havoc same things happening in uh, in eastern europe <coughs> excuse me and you can see as all of this sets up it's not looking good I mean, I'm not sure how you could even forecast out more than seven days, eight days, maybe 10 days at the most. You know, we really don't know what this jet stream is doing. It's making very, very, very erratic moves and uh, the speeds, uh, the speeds in the upper atmosphere, they seem to be much, much higher than normal. And that's why we're seeing these storms move very rapidly, which is kind of a good thing because if they would slow down, then they're going to produce longer periods of snow. When they slow down, that allows more of the, the hot air, the, the, uh, the warmer air to get up in there and produce heavier snow. A lot of the snow that we've been seeing is real, real lightweight snow. Uh, I refer to it almost like um, uh, sawdust. You know, you can literally blow it away. But sooner or later, you know, we're going to start getting these movements of warmer air up there, and we're going to get some of this heavier snow. And that heavier snow laying on trees, knocking limbs down on the power lines, power outages, things of that nature. So again, folks, you know, you got to be prepared for anything that's happening in your neck of the woods, whatever country you live in, whatever state you live in, whatever town you live in, got to be a little bit prepared because at any moment, you know, you could be at work doing your thing, you know, and the next thing you know, one of these systems moves in, you don't even know about it. And now you got to get on the road later on and go home after you're done working. You know, and we've already seen these instances all over the world happening with these, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 car pileups. They're very dangerous. And there's a lot of people out there that are just, you know, completely stupid when they're driving. These tractor trailers that you see crashing into each other, one after the other, cars smashing, piling up. Yes, folks, people are losing their lives. So... You know, we're going to have to stay up on all of this, you know, all of this. Um, one thing that I've been seeing, I've been seeing a lot of you guys that, that follow me here on Facebook and YouTube. You guys are really, really getting into sharing the information, doing a little bit of your own homework and forming this network worldwide. That is very, very, very important. And, um, I'm seeing more and more and more of it every single day. And, and uh, that's always been one of my goals to, to see this network form. Um, fabulous, fantastic people coming together worldwide, regardless of uh, religious beliefs, color of your skin, you know, whatever. People coming together worldwide, spreading the information and getting it all the way across our worldwide network. So, you know, hats off to all of you guys out there. Uh, I see more and more and more of it every single day. And, uh, hey, that's a good thing. Definitely a good thing. But, uh, folks, listen, uh, you know, real quick, uh, there was something I wanted to mention before, uh, before I cut loose here. And uh, just let me, let me jump over here to Planet X News 
on YouTube. Hey, folks, listen, once again, if you're not subscribed to Planet X News, make sure you get over there, click the subscribe button, click on the little black bell, and set your notifications up. Make sure you're getting notified of uh, videos that are up on Planet X News. They will always be shared on the Facebook page, but make sure you're subscribed. Uh, I'm going to jump over here real quick to uh, Dr. Elber's channel. Uh, Dr. Elbers has been, uh, she's been doing at least one or two videos a day on different subject matters, doing a video answering questions. Uh, you know, she's getting a lot of questions, so she'll make a video about it and hopefully answer everyone's questions and maybe pique the interest of others. Well, we've been noticing now, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, YouTube is starting to do what they did to my YouTube channel. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, Dr. Elbers, her view counts have dropped about 50%. Uh, things are definitely changing. They're monitoring what she's doing. And we saw uh, YouTube, like people are being deleted from their subscriptions to her channel. That's just not cool, you know? So they did it to me and I notified you guys, hey, check to see if you are subscribed. There was a large number of you that came back and said, wow, I didn't even know that they unsubscribed me. Oh, you know, that's, that's pretty bad, man. You know, and they're always being accused of this censorship. It's pitiful. But anyways, folks, to help Dr. Elbers out uh, and make sure that you are subscribed, go over to her YouTube channel and make sure that you are subscribed. You have to click on that little bell. Let me show you something here. This is their new deal, okay? Uh, people have been telling me that they have to click on that bell three or four times before this drop menu pops up. So when the drop menu pops up, you can click on all notifications, give me notifications occasionally or none. So make sure you're clicked on all, click over there and save it, but subscribe to her channel because, you know, as of right now, um, you know, her channel looks like they're doing the same thing to her that they did to me and they're doing it to others so get over there make sure that you are subscribed and uh watch dr elber's videos you know some of them are anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes long she she's been covering a wide variety of topics and she just doesn't pick an article and read it to you uh, dr elber's actually does research on all of her articles and she writes the article herself. She doesn't show you someone else's information. She investigates the matter, researches the matter, and reports on it. And her reports are very, very interesting. I also ask that when you view her articles, share them. Share them on our network, again, which is now worldwide. And you, you might pick up something. You might learn something from Dr. Elber's videos. I mean, I do. I, I pick up on a lot of things that, uh, that I didn't even know about before. And see, you know, she picks some interesting topics to go into. Um, tomorrow, early afternoon, probably, we're going to have a live stream with Dr. Elber's. And uh, we're going to go over this new find. And we're going to go over what she's been getting into in some of her reports and I find them very very interesting folks so again make sure that you're subscribed to the doctor's channel make sure you watch her videos and I'm sure that you could always always take something away after watching her videos so a lot of interesting things going on folks a lot of interesting things uh, I just uh I wish we had better news to talk about, but, you know, it is what it is. 
Uh, we're living in these times. All kinds of all kinds of things happening, you know. All kinds of things. I don't know if any of you guys watched this video. Uh, the video was sent to me by a gentleman, uh, this man Diego Aviles. Aviles. He was using his telescope, taking this uh, video of the moon, and he caught a UFO blasting off from the moon and, and heading away from it. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty intense. Uh, I cleared some of the things up on the video, put it into high definition, and uh, put it into a video format and uploaded it because I'm a firm believer of UFOs and uh, and other forms of life out there. I mean, let's just face it. You know, all of this didn't happen on Earth from a bunch of aliens. Naturally, we have a, a supreme being in God, our creator. But, you know, who created the aliens? <laughs> you know, but I thought that video was pretty interesting. Very, very credible. And it was actually dated for January 12th as he was viewing the uh, the moon from his telescope and using pretty sophisticated photography equipment attached to his telescope. Um, what other, one other thing that, again, we're keeping a very close eye on, uh, that massive crack and fissure on top of Rattlestake Ridge right outside of uh, Yakima, Washington. Uh, it's actually gotten bigger. There's more new footage of it. And uh, folks, this is the video I was talking about that I put up a day ago about the 400,000 mile plasma river that formed on the sun. See, this is right when I was catching on to what was occurring. And then lo and behold, bingo, you know, we, we get that, uh, that new discovery. Well, you know, to give another big shout out to Mr. MBB333, for pointing that information out. So a lot of things happening, folks. You know, we're only halfway through this month. And uh, I think things are probably going to get a little bit more interesting in uh, the next two weeks here. You know, each and every day is going to be more and more interesting. So folks, real quick, please make sure you are subscribed to Planet X News and uh, Dr. Elber's channel. If you're looking for her channel, you if you come to Planet X News on YouTube, feature channels, her channel is right there. Okay? Right there. If any of you are on the Planet X News website, right here on the website, you have links for Planet X News, and you click on that, and it takes you straight to Dr. Elber's channel. Make sure you're subscribed and uh, watch her videos. Share them. Get the information out there. And uh, the world will be a better place. <laughs> Hopefully. But listen, folks. Um, if you get a chance to watch our live stream with Dr. Elber's tomorrow. Uh, if you don't join in on the actual live stream the video will be on our Facebook page. It will be on my channel, and it will also be on Doctor's El uh, Doctor Elber's channel. So you know, make the point. Go in there, watch the information. If you get some time, share it, and listen, folks. Keep your eyes and your ears wide open. Keep sharing this information through social media, and uh, we'll be unstoppable. That's what it's all about. There are people out there right now that are really, really trying to shut my mouth. They're trying to shut Dr. Elbers up. Um, trust me. I'm not going to go into a bunch of this right now, but uh, they are really, really trying to come after us in uh, really, really bad ways. And um, they do not like the idea that our network of people uh, they don't like the idea of all of us coming together, becoming a little bit more stronger, a little bit more powerful each and every day, each and every week, each and every month. But you know what? That's just too damn bad. Too damn bad. 
But anyways, folks, I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to get some rest. Tomorrow's going to be a busy, busy day. All of you stay very, very safe. And I want to thank each and every one of you once again for following us and being a part of this information superhighway that we are forming, that we are paving the way, each and every one of us. So listen, folks, you all have a very, very good night. Don't forget, share this information. You all take care.